we will first talk about the very interesting situation in high fashion. Um, let's talk about Macy's first. Now, Macy's has chose, made a decision to outsource. Um, and they have they make a decision to outsource to Asia. So most of the suppliers are in China, uh, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Southeast Asia. Now, once Macy's has made the decision to outsource to Asia, and uh, these uh, large suppliers, they're very large suppliers, obviously um, they have very large batch size requirements. So Macy's has to get pieces in very large quantity. And um, what else Macy's has to do now? The lead time from the time that it starts to conceptualize a design and those products end up in stores is uh, 14 to 18 months. Again, because it has to deal with these multiple large suppliers or specialists, uh, dyeing specialists, knitting specialists, weaving specialists, and so on. And um, so while their product cost, the manufacturing cost, and probably the logistics cost is cheap, it's not very expensive, they have a very high lead time. And because of that high lead time, Macy's is not able to match the current fashion um, to a very good extent. Um, so their inventory cost, they have a lot of products which would generally not sell. Um, so Macy's is forced to create more promotions. And at the same time, they could have a hit product which sells uh, high numbers um, contrary to their forecasting expectations. In this situation, in this situation Macy's would have no ability to get those products manufactured quickly from some part of the Asia, their suppliers, and get it and replenish um, the existing super high demand. The second example here, which I will talk to you about, is Zara. Well, Zara was a cons Zara or their company Inditex is the world's most profitable retailer. Um, Inditex is this idea that a lot of the majority of their products are made in by their um, suppliers in Eastern Europe and Turkey. Now, the whole idea here is these are small suppliers; they use small batch sizes. And because of these small suppliers and small batch sizes, their manufacturing costs are generally higher than the Asian suppliers. But they are able to make goods in small quantities and consist consistently replenish the stores. So what Zara does is while Macy's has three or four fashions a year, Zara has 11 fashions a year. And they're completely able to change their retail store 11 times a year. Um, and um, if there is... You know, they, they don't make goods in very large batch size. They can actually put the goods in their store, see what works, and accordingly then get their suppliers to replenish based on what's selling. So their dependence on forecasting is substantially lesser. And the third, completely crazy, is Shein. It's the latest Chinese sensation. I know some of you might not like the quality of their products, but their prices are completely out of the world. So the idea here is while Zara... Um, let's start with Macy's. Macy's talks about taking 18 months, or 14 to 18 months on getting a product to the shelf. Zara talks about probably 30 days, um, four to six weeks in getting the product from design to um, shelf. Uh, Shein uh, talks about doing it in roughly two to three weeks. They can get from a design to the product to the shelf. Now, Shein has a substantial part. They do their own manufacturing. They don't outsource manufacturing. They have their own factories and they've invested substantial amount of money in their factories um, so that they can create um, goods in low batch sizes. So their batch size for a particular apparel is usually 200 pieces, 300 pieces or sometimes even 100 pieces. Uh, and uh, they have very strong relationship with some suppliers in, in Bangladesh and uh, Sri Lanka. Um, where um, they also have the similar ability to make pieces in very small batch sizes. So while their manufacturing cost goes up um, uh, because of this low batch size, their cap capital cost is high because they have these specialized factories, their inventory costs are substantially low and they are consistently able to create high fashion goods uh, which they're able to push in the market um, considerably faster than everybody else. So this is a brief example and to outsourcing um, decisions made by these um, three companies in high fashion. Now let's look at two different industries, Toyota. We have talked enough of them. Toyota has the special ability to work with suppliers or to create what they call as codependence on suppliers. And uh, because of this ability, Toyota is almost always happy to work with single suppliers. There have been cases, so there was a situation where um, one of Toyota's uh, suppliers, Riken, who makes piston rings, uh, they had an earthquake and in their facility. And um, because of that facility, the piston rings, they were not able to make. 
and uh, Toyota had to shut down their factory making cars because without piston rings you can't make pistons, without pistons you can't make engines, without engines you can't make cars. So well in this situation it might have been easy to think if Toyota had multiple suppliers they could have continued their operations. But for Toyota they have this special ability, they consider it sacrosanct to have this relationship with suppliers because it enables them reliability even with single suppliers and long term relationships which is important for them. And um, so even they create supply chains which are based on those single suppliers and uh, are able to make them work. Another example here is IKEA. Um, IKEA has a very typical manufacturing um, or, or uh, decision making cycle. So they virtually decide to outsource uh, most of their production. But the way they do it is uh, for functional parts or parts which have consistent demand um, or reliable demand they get those parts made in China or um, parts of Asia and other parts of the world. But parts which have inconsistent demand uh, or which we will call as innovative products. And um, these parts are made in Europe or factories which can make in low batch sizes. So what we see here is this decision in IKEA has does both um, for location, they choose distant suppliers and optimize on cost or make cost reduction possible for these items with reliable demand. And for items with unreliable demand, um, they try to minimize their inventory cost or um, maybe their wastage cost uh, um, or uh, obsolescence cost. So these are a few examples of businesses who have outsourced and uh, trying to show you how they have uh, leveraged these two theories or go gone against these two theories and make outsourcing possible successfully. In the next videos, we will talk about some companies which have insourced, okay, they had outsourced it previously and they have insourced it now and how these companies have made this insourcing successful.